Excuse me, is this the rendezvous point for the heritage tour? Ah, tourists. How's it going? I suppose you've been traipsing around all the local areas of interest. Mm -hmm. Well, you wouldn't want to be minding any of the shite that you'd be talking in them places. Propaganda's all that stuff is. If you back your arse there, we'll tell you the real history of Dublin. Ah, fair play to you. Well, it all more or less started in the 9th century when the Vikings arrived. They used Dublin as a place to chill out after they'd raped and pillaged the cultures in the surrounding areas. <laughs> they had these horny helmets, long boats, battle axes and blondy hair. Of course, these blondes had too much fun and were buttered over by a show called the Normans. <laughs> Scarlet, I mean, not exactly the scariest name for uh, an invading army, is it? But it turned out the Normans were well hard and gave everybody an awful kicking. You see, they had these longbows, which made shite the Danes' battle axes and the Irish hands. <laughs> the Normans though built grand wooden walls around the city. Then the English arrived. Didn't like them and rebuilt them in stone. Just to show off, you know. Everything with them was in stone. Except, of course, the agreements they had with us, which they broke whenever they bloody well felt like it. <clears throat> anyway. Now, I know we can laugh at the famine now, but it was dreadful at the time. So many of our beautiful buildings and books were eaten during the famine. Ah, but that was years ago. Now, the 20th century. In 1916, we had a rising where we took over a post office and a biscuit factory. We'd have taken over the breweries, we'd have controlled the whole country. At least when we were caught the next morning, we'd have had the excuse of... We did what? Eventually, the English did a legger in 1922. It was ours. What were we going to do with it? The church set up concentration camps for unmarried mothers known as Magdalene Laundries. Mind you, our dream of not having to walk was realised when industry after industry collapsed. I'm afraid uh, the swinging 60s debaucherous lifestyle in Ireland was mainly confined to church institutions. And so, today, would you look at the place? I tell you, once, you'd have woken up in Dublin in a drunken stupor and think you had died and gone to heaven. But now the English have bought us over. A fancy sex shop overlooks where the Declaration of Independence was read out. There was no sex in 1916, I tell you. We were only interested in getting out of bondage in them days. So there you are. <gasps> hey! Where do you think you're going? Sit down there, and I'll tell you the real story of the Middle East. Better make that a double. Eh, uh, take a while. Well, we start way back in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and his pet dinosaur were going for an old stroll.